Northwest winds 15 to 25 miles per hour tonight, 10 to 25 miles per hour tomorrow. The chance of precipitation is decreasing to 60% tonight and will be 80% on Sunday. Presently, it's 30 degrees. That's minus 1 Celsius. The New Seekers, look what they've done to my song, Ma. Before that, Don Williams and I Believe in You. Stereo 98 WRJS, something to tell your friends about. Great Stereo in Northwest Pennsylvania. WRJS, Oil City. Tri-City area weather at 3 o'clock. It'll be very cold with a few snow flurries this afternoon. Highs 10 to 15. Fair but very cold tonight. Lows 0 to 5 below. Mostly cloudy and not as cold on Sunday. Highs 15 to 20. The chance of snow will be 40% this afternoon. Near 0% tonight and will be 20% on Sunday. Present temperature in Oil City is 17 degrees. That's minus 8 Celsius. R.J.S. Oil City. James Taylor, Fire and Rain, before that, Abba, and the winner takes it all. You're listening to Stereo 98, Oil City's Entertainer. The Pointer Sisters, he's so shy. At 311, it's 17 degrees at W.R.J.S. There's a special kind of man on your Christmas shopping list. He doesn't like ties, and only on special occasions does he use aftershave. This man wants tools. SK Tools from Thomas Auto Parts, Oak Street in Reno, and Route 27 in East Titusville. You see, SK Tools are preferred by more professional race drivers on the circuit than any other name. So for that special man, give the special tools. SK Tools from Thomas Auto Parts in Reno and East Titusville. It's one gift guaranteed to be used and used and and used, and used, and used, and used, and used. Oil City's best music, W-R-J-S. Judy Collins, Amazing Grace. At 321, it's 17 degrees. Fisher and Father and Toro have teamed up to help you fight winter. Save your back in some cash, too, during Toro's great winter rebate days. Buy any single stage snow thrower and get a $30 check from Toro. Four models to choose from with throwing capacity up to 600 pounds a minute. Buy your Toro snow thrower now and get $30 back from Toro. Toro great winter rebate days are going on now at Fisher and Father, five miles north of Franklin on Route 417, Benango County's only Toro authorized service dealer. Hurry in today because Toro great winter rebate days end December 31st. Hi, I'm Henry Winkler and I like to help the Epilepsy Foundation because of what it's doing to give kids with epilepsy a better chance in life. That's why I'm asking you to read the Foundation's letter carefully when it arrives. They sure need your help. And you'll find out some things about epilepsy that just might surprise you. Remember, with epilepsy, a little help can make all the difference. Blondie on 1340 WOYL, the tide is high. And now here's Ronnie Millsap, Smoky Mountain Rain. Boston, let me take you home tonight. Tri-City area weather, it'll be bitter cold tonight with snow and some squalls accumulating another 1 to 3 inches. We'll have snow tapering off to flurries late on Sunday. It'll be cloudy with a chance of flurries Sunday night and Monday. Lows tonight 5 to 10 below, with wind chills much colder. Highs on Sunday near 5 above. The lows near 0 Sunday night. It'll be highs on Monday will be near 15. The chance of snow will be decreasing to 40% late tonight and will be 30% Sunday night. Pleasant Oil City temperature is 10 degrees. That's minus 12 Celsius. Want something new? Yeah. How about chicken at McDonald's? Chicken at McDonald's? With chicken, nobody can do it like McDonald's can. McDonald's presents a whole new way to love chicken. There's no new way to make chicken. How about a hot chicken sandwich? Nobody, nobody else in this whole land. Nobody makes chicken like McDonald's. Make chicken. We've discovered a special way to cook plump, tender chicken, crunchy golden brown on the outside, juicy on the inside. 
chicken sandwich. Mm. And you said there's no new way to make chicken. We add lettuce and tasty sauce and serve it hot on a toasted sesame seed bun. I love it. McDonald's, you've done it again. You're gonna love the chicken. We made it just for you. You're the reason we do it. Nobody can do it. Big chicken like McDonald's can. A participating McDonald's. W-O-I-A. Still again on 1340 W-O-Y-L, Hey 19. Hey, Wolfman Jack with the word about selective service registration. And registration does not mean the draft. The draft would take an act of Congress. All registration is, is it gives them a pool of names to select from in case there is a national emergency. I'm just trying to tell you like it is, male citizens and aliens residing in the United States, born in 60, 61, and 62, have a responsibility to register and to keep selective service advised of any change of address. So do it at any U.S. post office. Hey, thank you. He's got a friend in Oil City. W-O-I-L. Jay Ferguson, Thunder Island. And now here's a little queen with another one bites the dust. Be cool after school and all the time with a Mung's Magic Cow. A Mung's Magic Cow is your favorite instant powder drink in a tall, refreshing glass of Mung's Milk. When these two ingredients are blended together, they make one of the most delicious drinks around. Serve a tall, cold glass of Mung's Magic Cow along with your favorite sandwiches, cookies, or cake, and that's sure to make your family and friends content. As content as a Magic Cow, that is. Mary Manilow at 646, I made it through the rain. Present Oil City temperature is 10 degrees, that's minus 12 Celsius. Andy Gibb, time is time, and speaking of the time, it's 654, and here's a little Pat Benatar. NBC News, this is Don Blair. The Reagan cabinet guessing game. Still some important slots to fill, so the speculation goes on. Philip Sanchez, a Mexican-American, turned down the housing secretary post last week. So now the New York Times and Washington Star are saying the job will go to a black lawyer, Samuel Pierce. Richard Ling, once the president-elect's agriculture commissioner in California, has fallen in favor to John Block, who is now Illinois' director of agriculture. Block is favored to get that post in the new cabinet. James Watt, a Denver attorney, could be Interior Secretary, but environmental groups do not dig the idea. Former South Carolina Governor James Edwards, probably Energy Secretary, the position Mr. Reagan will probably eliminate. And Jean Kirkpatrick, Georgetown University political scientist, may be the first woman of cabinet-level status in the new administration if and when she becomes ambassador to the UN. More news in a minute. A performance story from Phillips Petroleum. Sounds good, honey. I'm Becky Haynes. My husband Jim is a policeman in Lincoln, Nebraska. Jim always has to find a better way. So when we added on to our home, we looked for an economical way to heat it. We found a system using new solar energy rods to store heat from the sun. Jim goes on and on about it. He said the rods use a special plastic pipe Phillips Petroleum developed. And that helps keep the cost of the system down. I was surprised an oil company was involved, but I wasn't surprised Jim found such an economical way. Our system supplies a large share of our heat. When Jim said it wouldn't take long to pay for itself, I was skeptical until I saw our heating bills. They're much less than last year's. Leave it to Jim to find a better way. Phillips Petroleum. Good things for cars and the people who drive them. Friday night at the U.N., the U.S. joined all other Security Council members in approving a resolution urging Israel to allow the return of two ousted left bank mayors. Now, a sit-in at the U.N., as Ricky Rosenthal reports. Two Palestinian mayors spent the night with blankets and cushions provided by the U.N. in an elegant lounge adjacent to the Security Council chamber. They told the press 
that their hunger strike and sit-in was a staying in in trust of the UN. Their aim to get Prime Minister Begin to readmit them to the West Bank. Their staying in is justified because the Security Council unanimously last night demanded they be readmitted to their hometowns. This small drama put Secretary General of all time in an awkward position. Just recently, he bowed to Russian pressure and barred former Afghan diplomats from entering the UN for press interviews. Ricky Rosenthal for NBC News at the United Nations. And at the State Department, they're burning some weekend oil studying Iran's latest demands for billions of dollars in escrowed American funds to be deposited in Algerian banks. The cash, some $8 billion in frozen Iranian assets, plus an as yet undetermined amount to cover the late Shah's alleged wealth. A tough, if not impossible, job for the State Department with over 300 lawsuits currently pending against Iran. And this is the 413th day of captivity for the hostages. This is NBC News. When even I stopped going to my own coffee club, I knew something was wrong. It had to be my coffee. Then I switched to new improved Kava Instant. Now no one leaves my house with a bitter feeling. Kava's the only 90% acid neutralized coffee. That means it tastes less bitter when you drink it, so it feels better after. And with this improved blend of coffee beans, Kava tastes better than ever. Now my coffee club is so popular, I even turned down my own mother. <laughs> new improved Kava Instant. Tastes better when you drink it, so it feels better after. I run a supermarket, and people always ask my advice. Nick, what should I buy for this? What should I buy for that? Well, I can't steer them wrong, or they won't come back. So when someone asks, well, what should I buy to clean my bathroom? I always say, fantastic. They say, fantastic is my kitchen cleaner. Look, I tell them, as fast and easy as fantastic cleans your kitchen, it'll clean your bath. Well, they must like it. They keep coming back for more. Fantastic. What it does for your kitchen, it'll do for your bath. The nation's air traffic controllers are in the process of trying to iron out their next contract. And if there is a strike early next year, the controllers say their federal overseers asked for it. Jerry Damon reports. According to Gary Eads, regional vice president of the Professional Air Traffic Controllers Organization, the Federal Aviation Administration is trying to incite the air traffic controllers to strike. I believe if there is any inciting going on at all in this country, it's by the employer. Employers taking a constant stance of uh, belittling the profession, belittling the air traffic controller. He's pointed out that the air traffic controllers around the nation don't get an acceptable contract before the current one expires in March. They intend to refuse to go back to work at that time. Jerry Damon for NBC News, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Seven jailed IRA members ended their hunger strike in a Northern Ireland prison Thursday after 53 days, and today IRA leaders were calling for victory marches throughout Ulster. Don Blair, NBC News. This is Brian Madden with Weekend Sports. The San Diego Chargers and Buffalo Bills are nearing the end of their AFC semifinal playoff game. Ron Rena reports from San Diego Stadium. After turning 14-3 at halftime, the Chargers came out to open the third quarter, moving 70 yards in four plays. Down south, hit veteran Charlie Joyner with a nine-yard touchdown pass to make it 14-10 Buffalo. On the way, the Chargers had a punt block, but dodged the bullet when safety Glenn Edwards intercepted a Joe Ferguson pass. The third quarter ended. 14 to 10. Opening up the fourth period, the Chargers move the ball from midfield down inside the five. Rolf Bernerska has just now kicked a field goal, and so early in the fourth quarter, it is Buffalo 14, San Diego 13. In the NFC today, the Philadelphia Eagles stopped the Minnesota Vikings 31 to 16 in a game that featured eight interceptions and four fumble recoveries. The Vikings' Tommy Kramer intercepted six times, while Ron Jaworski had two picked off, but he's not complaining. There's no question it's one of the biggest wins that we've had. You know, it, it puts us one step further to, you know, to the ultimate goal of, of, of a pro athlete. And, you know, we're 60 minutes away from being in the Super Bowl. Hey, I, it's my eighth year in the NFL, and I've been in the playoffs seven times and never been in the Super Bowl. So um, it's kind of exciting right now to be only one game away. That one game comes against tomorrow's winner of the Atlanta-Dallas game. The Vikings fell apart after taking a 14-0 lead in the second quarter today. Eagles coach Dick Vermeil points to what happened after the intermission. The second half drive right at the start of the second half. And going right down the score was a big motivating thing for the squad. I think the public uh, fumble, which was an outstanding defensive play, uh, was another big thing. And then from then on, it was all downhill for Minnesota. Wilbert Montgomery scored twice on short runs for the Eagles, and Harold Carmichael caught a touchdown pass for all the points the Eagles were to need. More after this. 
Basketball, fifth-ranked Kentucky defeated Georgia 76-62 to in a Southeast Conference game. Bulldogs coach Hugh Durham thought his team had a chance, though, after the first half. When we came out there, we were four points down. You think we're not going to get to the game. So, uh, we'll play good defense, and maybe they don't score, and you go down and get back in the game. But they got seven unanswered points. We weren't in the game. We grew shot selection again wasn't good. And then, you know, they come out and play good, and bang, you're out of the game. Kentucky was led by Fred Cowan with 22 points, 18 of them in the second half. In the Atlantic Coast Conference, eighth-ranked and undefeated Wake Forest breezed past Georgia Tech 87-61. Wake Forest coach Carl Pacey finds his team now with a 10 and nothing record. We're very pleased with uh, the way the, the season has gone for us up till now, and uh, we'd like to lay this block of uh, wins over to the side and just uh, think about starting a new season with the conference play beginning. Guy Morgan led the Deacons with 20 points. In college football, both UPI and AP have the undefeated Georgia Bulldogs as the top team in the nation in their final polls. This is Brian Madden with Weekend Sports on the NBC Radio Network.